welcome to a new episode of Letters from the Shed. Today, I have found copious quantities of material created during our family studies. Now, my mother, apparently, she really enjoyed being the teacher in that, that role to give people tests and uh, I mean, really long tests. Like, I had tests in college that weren't like this. Here is one, and it was a test on Chapter 3 of something. And it, it just keeps on going. It, it keeps on going in different colors. Question number one. Was Adam free to choose either the good way or the bad way? What would it mean if Adam and Eve chose the bad way? What was the first lie? What was the wicked angel called because of it? How did Adam and Eve show their guilt? What did Adam and Eve pass on to their children? What wicked thing did Cain do? Where did Cain get his wife? How was Noah different from other men of that time? What time? What was Noah to bring into the ark besides his family? What was the rainbow covenant? What important things should the rainbow remind us of? And she actually wrote the, the answers on this one. Number one, not to murder. Number two, not to kill animals without cause. And number three, not to eat blood. Well, didn't Jehovah kill a bunch of animals without cause? Like people without cause? Yeah. Anyway, here's another one. Another test that she made for us. Draw or write an answer. What were the seven creative days? How long was each creative day? Apparently back then they were teaching that um, the creative days were 7,000 years each. I think that has changed several times since then. What was man made out of? What was woman made out of? Interesting how men are made of dust and breath of life and women are made out of Adam's rib. Moving right along, she has scriptures for us to look up and names our names assigned in red next to those. Many more tests, but here we have one of my tests. Now you can see how old I was by my handwriting here. I was trying so hard, but I didn't know any of the first like nine questions. I must have refused to write them because some of them are checked and some of them are X'd, which there's nothing written there. So I'm assuming I must have given verbal answers there. I'm not real sure how I got minus three and then 80, and then 70, and then a three-quarter point on one of these, and ended up with a grade of 150. Very good. She was real good at Bible, but I'm not sure she was real good at math. Here's one from a little bit later that I got 100 on. I don't know what the questions were, but I knew all of these books of the Bible in order. Pretty impressive. Then we have one when I was in, this was from when I was in first grade, and it was a test about, evidently, it was about the burning bush. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Then we have a test about Gideon, apparently. I mean, this is, it was like endless testing. This is what being a Jehovah's Witness is. Endless testing. So apparently this was about the Ten Commandments. My favorite is number nine, do not commit adultery. Then we have my sister, lots of red ink on that test, lots and lots and some X's and yeah, she apparently got a 70, 80. I don't know what that means. I'm surprised my sister participated in this actually. I would think that she probably would have been more likely to just like ball the thing up and set it on fire. I guess that came later. So here's one of my tests from, apparently we were studying the Paradise book and it was 1984, so I would have been seven. Oh, you know what? This is the, the answers to the one that, to the test that we looked at first. Yeah. This is how much brainwashing and how, how heavy the brainwashing was even when I was seven years old. I got a 98 though. I'm not gonna check the math. So here's one from that same year, possibly a little earlier, but you'll find it interesting. Look at answer number nine. Yeah, 
at the age of six or seven, I was answering questions about sex will end course. Okay, here's another one. And apparently question number 37 was about how the Bible was written. My answer was God wrote it himself by telling them what to do forever. <laughs> here is another one. There are a lot more tests for me in here than there are for my sister which is interesting because i think maybe she did start saying like no freaking way am i doing this oh hi hi there andromeda princess andromeda has gotten much larger she's sweet kitty oh love her okay go ahead she wants to be loved and then she doesn't want to be loved my spelling was very creative if you notice more of the same and then you can see my drawing. This is the kind of things that uh, as Jehovah's Witnesses you are shown as a child and encouraged to recreate. Of course, lots of animals drowning and people drowning in the flood and King Solomon chopping the baby in half. Psychologist would have a field day. I wonder, did she test us every time? Oh, this is hilarious. See what I said for CE, what CE means? Christian error. More of the same, just more and more and more of these test papers. And they're long, I mean, they're like pages long. Anyway, in case you need a point of comparison, this is a six, almost seven year old. Hi. <laughs> Has mama ever made you take a test? Uh, no. No, not except in school? Yeah. We're sitting on an exercise ball. Whoa, boing, whoa, boing, whoa, boing, whoa. Boing. whoa. <laughs> Go do Bye. Bye-bye. Apparently, we find out why the Nephilim came to Earth. In my sister's, my sister's test, they wanted to do it with them. Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt. P-I-L-L-E-R. <laughs> pillar. There's a question on here that where my sister's answer was nothing. And she had to scribble it out. And I believe the question was, what was your, your favorite of the scriptures that we had been tasked with looking up? And so she had scribbled it out because she had been forced to write another answer besides nothing. I like about Eglon and Ehud. It's kind of gross, but I kind of like it. Um, in case you didn't know, Eglon and Ehud is uh, the story in the Bible where someone, um, Eglon, I believe, is stabbed with a sword and fecal matter comes out. My sister's favorite scripture. All right. I mean, we're going on like, there's 40 or 50 questions on these. Like, it's ridiculous. Seriously, we don't, we didn't even have test this long in college. They're not just one answer either. It's like 20 A, B, C, D, you know, I, it, each question has multiple parts. We were expected to know literally the entire Bible when we were, you know, seven and 11 or 12 or whatever. So another project that my mother had us do was uh, to illustrate the fruits of the spirit using pictures we cut out of magazines. So for example, goodness. Helping your sister read is being good. This was one of my favorites. Mildness. Swiss Miss. <laughs> Faith is represented by cat food. <laughs> Nothing. I don't even know. I don't know what this one is. It, it's faded out. I can't see it anymore. But there's a nice lady exercising. I don't really know what that's about. Kindness. Popsicles. <laughs> For love, we have a daddy and a baby. Peace. We had an obsession with cats. I'm not really sure what it was about. Oh, this is a little weird. Joy. Apparently, Joy is being naked with the teddy bear. This picture creeps me out just a little bit. I'm not really sure where we got it. I, it's, yeah, weird. And last but not least, self-control. This is another of my sisters, and apparently self-control is Richard Gere with a cigarette. <laughs> my sister was a bit cheeky. <laughs> Moving right along with the letters from the shed, family study extravaganza. This is uh, my book of Bible characters. I'm not really sure what why we had to do this, but it we have a lovely picture of a somewhat deformed donkey, so that's interesting. <laughs> So in my book of Bible characters, we find an article from the May 22nd, 1980 awake about sperm and eggs. And why did we have to cut it out of the magazine and paste it on notebook paper? I, I don't really understand this. So here's Eve, the first woman to be deceived. Great uh, material for young girls. Oh, 
oh, this is great. Sadly, however, Eve had apparently failed to develop the needed appreciation for her maker to think positively about the divine command. In a spirit of independence, Eve chose to decide for herself what was good and what was bad instead of submitting to God's decision in this. Uh, oh God, this is hilarious. This should be in Sex in the Watchtower, really. What was the result? The immediate effect was an unpleasant one. No longer could Adam and Eve look upon each other's unclothed bodies in a pure way. Their guilty conscience made them feel unclean, giving rise to sensations that they had never experienced before. With fig leaves, they made loin coverings for themselves. Okay, so basically what they're saying here is that they didn't have any urge to get it on until they ate from the tree. I want to know where that tree is and how do I get one? Who, who upon taking an aphrodisiac and realizing that, that somebody's like, bump chicka wow, do they start covering themselves with fig leaves and feeling guilty? Like only if they've been brainwashed. It's so strange. He was persecuted as a child. You got to get a load of this picture. I don't know who that is. Isaac. Let's see. Rebecca. Oh, the proud rebel. Cora. It's one of their favorite Bible characters, the Levite Cora. Balaam. Mm. I used to love that story, except that I didn't, I liked that the donkey talked, but I didn't like that they beat the donkey. That was not cool. Who was Balaam? A diviner. JL. Oh, she's the one who killed the guy with a tent stake. Nice. Hannah. A woman who found comfort in prayer. She doesn't look very comfortable to me. Her hands are too big. She's got man hands. Really, her, she's, the proportion's really weird. Like, scary weird. Jonathan. Wow. I mean, the pictures that they showed us just, just blow my mind. Blow my mind. Abigail. An outstandingly discreet woman. Meth. Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, an appreciative man. I don't, they stopped talking about Mephibosheth. The Mephibosheth, the Mephibosheth, the I don't even know what he did. He was an appreciative man though. Like we had to memorize the, the family lines of these people that like did nothing. Like why? Oh wow. Um, this picture is almost unseemly, isn't it? This is what I was indoctrinated with as a child, guys. This is what is wrong with me. Athalia. Athalia? Athalia? Look at her. Wow. So we can either be the lady who was not looking very comfortable or the power mad hoe bag, apparently. Those are our options. Esther, a discreet woman who displays her unselfishness. She's a nice manicure, though. And apparently one of those 80s coin belts around her head. She must have a huge head. Oh, here she is not relenting. No. Die, mofo. Just die about it. And Esther's story goes on and on and on. A maiden's unswerving love. Oh, this is the Shulamite. Shulamite maiden. Here she is. The famous Shulamite maiden. Shulamite was not a white girl. This is kind of creepy. Not real sure what's going on there, but it's kind of creepy. A lot of this artwork is creepy as hell. Here's another creepy one. I'm not real sure what these pictures have to do with each other, but you know, there they are. Baruch, a secretary who received a prophetic message. Not that anyone cares. Jesus. Oh, here's Jesus. Jesus. That's where he got his comma wrong. We had to search through watchtowers. I think this was a way of my mother getting rid of the old magazines, having us cut them up and make them into books, which is kind of ridiculous. Oh, here's Dorcas. She's such a Dorcas. The Apostle, oh, the Apostle John and his fight against apostate elements. This is so crazy. And for some reason, an article called No Unlucky Spell Can Harm You. And here's a Jehovah's Witness telling off a witch doctor. That's fun. I guess that's a Jehovah's Witness. He's got his New World Translation. But he's looking like he's about to take a swing, isn't he? Me. Fun times. Hope you enjoyed that walk down memory lane. That's it for today. I'm Sister Fister. Thank you.